Unit 10, Day 1, Surface Area and Volume. A prism is a polyhedron with two congruent parallel faces called bases. So here we have an example of a prism, and here's another one. And the two that are parallel are called the bases, this one and this one. All the other faces around are called the lateral faces. An altitude of a prism is the perpendicular segment that joins the planes of the bases. So this perpendicular segment that joins the two bases is called the altitude. The height of the prism is the length of that altitude. So here's the height, and then on this prism, this is the height. The height does not always have to be up and down. You want to think of height as the measurement that connects the two bases. A cylinder is a solid that has two congruent parallel bases that are circles. So cylinders are very similar to prisms, except their bases are always going to be circles. An altitude of a cylinder is the perpendicular segment that joins the planes of the bases. And again, the height of the cylinder is the length of the altitude. The height is the segment that joins the two bases. A pyramid is a polyhedron where one face, the base, is a polygon, and the other faces, the lateral faces, are triangles that meet at a common point called the vertex of the pyramid. The altitude of the pyramid is the perpendicular segment from the vertex to the plane of the base. The length of the altitude is the height of the pyramid. The slant height is the length of the altitude of a lateral face of the pyramid. A cone is a solid that has one base, a circle, and a vertex that is not in the same plane as the base. So this is similar to a pyramid, except the base is a circle. The altitude is the perpendicular segment from the vertex to the center of the base. The height is the length of that altitude, and the slant height is the distance from the vertex to a point on the edge of the base. A sphere is the set of all points in space equidistant from a given point called the center. A radius is the segment that has one endpoint at the center and one endpoint on the sphere. A diameter is the segment that passes through the center with endpoints on the sphere. So diameter and radius are the same as we talked about in circles, except this time we're talking about a three-dimensional sphere. So it can go to any point on the circle. When a plane and a sphere intersect in more than one point, the intersection is a circle. If the center of the circle is also in the center of the sphere, it's called a great circle. The circumference of the great circle is the circumference of the sphere. And a great circle divides a sphere into two hemispheres. We want to talk about the idea of a net. And the idea of a net, it's a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional figure. The best way to think about it is to imagine unfolding a box or peeling a banana. If we were to take this graham cracker box with these measurements, and if we slowly start to break apart that box and peel it open until it lays completely flat, and we can see the pattern that was used to create the box, this is called a net. So every three-dimensional figure has a net, except for the sphere. This is a copy of part of the formula sheet for the SOL that we'll be using. Here we have formulas for the area and perimeter of some of the two-dimensional figures. But these three-dimensional figures are the ones that we want to focus on. So we're going to go through a few examples, but this formula sheet is going to be key. Here, we need to find the surface area of each solid below. This is a rectangular prism, so you're going to have to first identify on your formula sheet the correct formula. So here we have a rectangular prism, and it tells us the surface area is found using this formula. So L, W, and H, these variables are also shown here, length, width, and height. So you want to match those length, width, and height on the diagram that you have, and then you just want to substitute those values into the formula. 
So 2 times our length is 12, times the width is 6, plus 2 times the length is 12, plus the, times the height is 8, plus 2 times the width is 6, times the height is 8. And when you put all of that into your calculator, you should get 432 inches squared. Since this is area, our answer needs to be squared. Let's look at the next one. This is a cylinder. It has bases that are circles. So on your formula sheet, you should locate this one. And then we need to substitute in the radius and the height. So it shows you on this diagram the radius and where the height is. Here's the radius and here's the height. So we want to substitute in those values. 2 times pi times the radius squared plus 2 times pi times the radius times the height. When you plug this all into your calculator, you should get 377 centimeters squared as your final answer. This next one, this is a pyramid. So you should locate the pyramid on your formula sheet. We need the L, the slant height, P, the perimeter of the base, and capital B, which is the area of the base shape. So if you look here carefully, L is that slant height running down the side of the pyramid, and then capital B shows the shaded bottom. So that's the entire area of that base shape and then P stands for perimeter of the base. So when we look at our diagram to substitute in our information, L, that slant height, is found here on the side, nine. And then we need to multiply that times the perimeter of the base. Now this base is a square, so six plus six plus six plus six, that's 24. Capital B, the area of the base shape, to find the area of a square, you take the base times the height, so that's 6 times 6. Now when we put all of that into the calculator, we get 144 centimeters squared. Next, let's take a look at this cone. So you want to identify on your formula sheet the cone and the two things that we need to substitute in are the radius and the slant height. So the diagram shows on the formula sheet the radius and the slant height. So we need to find that on our diagram. Pi times the radius squared plus pi times the radius times the slant height. And when we put that into the calculator, we get 103.7 inches squared. Finally, we have the sphere. And the sphere only has one measurement. So you find the sphere on your formula sheet, and we just need to substitute in the radius. So 4 times pi times the radius squared. And when we put that in the calculator, we get 201.1 centimeters squared. And there's your final answer. So here it's really important that you correctly identify which three-dimensional figure you have and then use the formula that they give you and the diagram where they label all of those measurements to find the appropriate numbers on your diagram. Next we're going to take a look at volume and we're going to go through the same process. Here we have a rectangular prism, and then you find the rectangular prism on your formula sheet, but this time we need to use the volume formula, the one that says V. So again, we're going to use our length, width, and height to substitute in our values 13, 4, and 5. So the volume is equal to length times width times height, so we're going to multiply the length times the width times the height, and that gives us a total of 260 centimeters cubed. Now when we're calculating volume, the measurement needs to be cubed 
because we're actually asking the question how many one in one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter cubes will it take to fill up this rectangular prism so this next one here's a cylinder so again you want to find the cylinder on your formula sheet and we need to substitute in radius and height so the volume is pi times the radius this cylinder is turned on its side but it's okay the radius goes from the center to the edge of the circle so our radius is 5.2 times the height and again we talked about this in the notes but the height does not have to be up and down the height is the distance between the two bases so that's going to be 9.8 when we substitute that and plug this in the calculator we get 832.5 centimeters cubed let's take a look at this next one here we have a pyramid with the square base and so again we find the formula of a pyramid on our formula sheet and we want to substitute in there's that capital B again for the area of the base shape and the height and you should notice that goes directly down the middle of the pyramid so we substitute in one-third capital B the area of the base which again it's a square so it's 8 times 8 and then we need to multiply it times the height the height also happens to be 8 that's okay so when we put that into the calculator we get 170.7 centimeters cubed next we have the cone we have a radius and again the height goes straight down the middle of the cone so you want to find the cone on your formula sheet and then we need to substitute in radius and height so we get one-third pi times the radius which is 4 squared times the height which is 6 and when we put that in the calculator we get a hundred point five inches cubed now lastly we have the sphere again and of course you find the sphere on your formula sheet and then we're going to substitute in our measurement of the radius into our formula. 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. And then we get an answer of 1,436.8 inches cubed. So again, the way we find volume is very similar to the process we're doing with surface area you need to identify what your three-dimensional figure is, match it with the one on the formula sheet, and then make sure you use the diagram to help you substitute in the correct measurements for whether it be radius, height, length, width, base, perimeter, whatever it is. And then the last part is making sure that you put it in the calculator correctly. Please be really careful when you put fractions into your calculator Fractions should always be put in as parentheses, or convert this into a decimal first, then multiply it through. That's it. Go ahead and work on the practice problems that I've given you, and then I'll be able to answer more questions next time.